families being filed out, people being filed out in tears. Um, I spoke to one man who rode down this street right here on his bike because his wife uh, was at the hot yoga studio and and for a couple of minutes he was in complete terror because he was not able to hear from her while she made her way out of that hot yoga studio and it was an incredible scene when they embraced and he realized that he would have her coming home to him um, again a lot of families on standby they're just waiting here right now it's a lot of uncertainty it's a lot of uncertainty for us too but we're going to continue to bring you as much information as possible we're about to be briefed by the PIO of the Tallahassee Police Department Damon Miller no, that's good. We're friends now. We, uh, he was being a little mean to me before, but, but we're friends now. All right. Thank you very much, Jane. Thank you, Tiger. Fletcher, let's move. Here we go. Just hearing some of the stories that they told me about Tina. She's a huge Atlanta Braves fan. She's kind of a bookworm, too. And those stories just made me happy to, to hear them talking and reminiscing. Now, that was when Tina was still missing. So to know that that family has some kind of relief now gives me relief. Not a lot of people know what it's like to have to deal with someone who is mentally disabled in the house and how much individual individual work has to come uh, out of it, how much group work has to come in order to make every single day a success because every single day is a struggle. So to know that that family has relief gives me relief. And it was an incredible development today. Our cameras are rolling at the right time, but the most important thing is that Tina is safe uh, and with her family now. They say you just don't know until you try. So of course, I tried it for myself. This is a certified course that's uh, been designed by Sheriff Campbell a while back to where uh, they could try out and get through the course. They have a time limit to finish it and complete it by. But the course is not as easy as it looks. They've got the new head coach in Willie Simmons. They have the new energy around the football program. And as you can see, they've got the makings of a brand new field. Take you back to 1939. Howard Hanna, the owner of this property here in Thomasville, Georgia, was faced with a decision. He had this amazing theater here, the Showboat Theater, on his plantation. But one of his friends down the road, he wanted him to invest in a movie. And he didn't really know much about the movie at the time. It was just a small project at the time in 1939 called Gone with the Wind. Well, here in Showboat Theater, 80 years after Gone with the Wind first aired in Atlanta, Georgia, this was the one spot where it first met the public's eye. But I want to give you guys just a sense of, of the scope of this parking center right now. Brandon, if you could, just zoom into the hot yoga center where we believe the shooting occurred. There's an entrance to the north side of it, but this whole area over here, this the Yacht Yoga Studio is at the very end of the shopping center. There is all of this space and all of these shops off to the right, if you're looking at it there. There's the long corridor that goes all the way down the, the, uh, the shopping center until you get to another exit. So this is a, a peculiar circumstance right here that a shooting occurred at this hot yoga studio. Again, it isn't confirmed yet. We're still awaiting that information. Uh, Tallahassee Police Department talking to me saying that five people were shot. But after the water break, it's time to get back to work. When and if we get to that 21st day, it will officially be tied for the longest government shutdown in the history of our country. And many federal employees have certainly been furloughed, but a lot of them have to continue working without pay, including the workers that you see behind me right now on Monroe Street in Tallahassee. It's been just over a month since Denise Williams was convicted on three charges in the murder of her ex-husband, Mike Williams. Well, today, one of those charges was dropped as defense attorney Ethan Way fought for a new trial. Again, an incredible scene here that happened so fast. It seemed like the, the actions of this entire event came in so fast. We're continuing coverage um, as much as we can, and we're providing that information as fast as we can get that information. Families out here visibly upset. Uh, while when I first got here, there were still um, authorities bringing families and bringing people outside of the hot yoga studio. This scene is, is developing now, and we're going to continue to provide you as much information as possible as we get it. For now, I'll send it back to you. You can see the images on social media. You can read about the devastation. But it's not until you see a site like this that you truly realize the severity of the situation here in Mexico Beach. It's not until you hear the house alarms going off along the beach that you realize how alarming this situation is. Today, on his first day on the job, Governor Ron DeSantis saw all of this with his own eyes. Midtown Tallahassee is usually a place where people go to relax and unwind. But all of that changed drastically on Friday night. 
Two people are dead and five others are injured after a gunman opened fire at the Tallahassee Hot Yoga Studio off of Thomasville Road around 530 on Friday evening. As early as 830 on Saturday morning, citizens began walking up to the second floor of the Benton Plaza where I am now and placing flowers at the doorstep of the studio in remembrance of the victims. It is not yet clear what the motive of the shooter was. I think that everyone can understand uh, or at least begin to understand the internal struggle that comes with making uh, any life-changing decision. But without judging the actual decision of him going to Texas A&M, do you feel like he could have handled the process of getting there and, and telling everyone a little bit better? You know, uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty, and I'm sure that Jimbo, when he uh, thinks about that in, in hindsight, uh, uh, he, he may he may feel that way. Michael Hudak has been digging into this story today and he's live now with a look at how those changes are going to happen and how it could impact classrooms. Michael. Julie Eden, good evening. Well, that was really the big question today. We know that Governor DeSantis wants the state to take another look at the education system here in the state of Florida before our teachers, for our classrooms, for our students, and even right here in this county. What kind of tangible differences are we going to see with all of this and when all of this is implemented? That was the question that I really set out to find the answer to today. What the state is doing is reevaluating the standard and making possible changes to curriculum, to textbooks, to professional development for teachers, etc. I spoke with Assistant Superintendent of Leon County Schools, Ms. Jillian Gregory. Her job is to facilitate all of this at the local level, but she assured that this is not going to be some overnight thing. The standards are maybe the seed from which all instruction and learning it grow. And so when we talk about reviewing those standards, um, it's really a process. Um, it's not something where we're going to turn the light off and tomorrow because of executive order, we turn the light on on something new. And that's exactly right. Governor DeSantis has set a rough deadline of about 2020 for these changes to become official. So for parents in our school systems, you're not going to see any major changes just yet. But as the interim dean at the FAMU College of Education also told me today, she said that this is to help our students become ready for college and for the work level. We'll have much more coming up on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. But for now, I'll send it back to you. Okay, Michael, yeah. It's like something out of a movie scene. East Point authorities have been working to put out a fire that started late Sunday afternoon, spanning hundreds of acres and wiping out dozens of homes. An emotional scene as members of the community gathering at the fire station behind me, not knowing if their pets are alive, not knowing if their families are alive but thankful to still be breathing. This is probably one of the most quick, catastrophic events I've ever seen. Don't know if the house is okay, don't know if neighbors are okay. I looked out my front window and all the houses across the street were gone. It started getting hotter and smokier and I thought we were gonna die. A mandatory evacuation has been issued for Ridge Road, Wilderness Road, Twin Lakes, North Bay Shore, and Highway 65. Red Cross arriving to help people with disaster relief. Summer camp programs for the kids are open Monday. Even if the kids are not registered, they can still come and get free breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The community here is broken, but they're not defeated. Determined to help each other get back on their feet. In East Point, Michael Hudak, WCTV Eyewitness News. I like this one. I like this one. Look at that. Ah. Three is a charm. I just started crying right there on the uh, table, and then I asked the nurse, I was like, um, how do you know? Micah, Michaela, and Malachi are just the second set of triplets born in Tallahassee this year, and they're already the talk of the town. I can't even see personality in them now. They're only two days old. Proud parents Pat and Ambrielle didn't know what to think when they found out. I could have probably thrown up. Like, <laughs> when she said three, it was crazy. It's like so much love. That's the only word I can use. It's like, holding them now, I just feel so warm. Like, my heart's warming right now. Imagine walking into this room with a family of two and walking out with a family of five. For Pat and Ambrielle, it's a big transition but it's well worth it. Yes. This time of happiness, less than a year after tragedy, Anthony Scott, Ambrielle's father, lost his wife and two children in a house fire last year. Now, he's got three beautiful blessings back in his arms. First of all, tears, tears. I was extremely happy, especially based on my last year's events. They are going to be the first and the beginning of my everyday and the ending. Triple the action, triple the excitement, triple the love.